Our 25th anniversary, tonight on Washington Week in Review. Now here's moderator Paul Duke. Good evening. A few things have happened this week. Senator Bob Curry won the Democratic primary in South Dakota. Congress has rejected President Bush's economic recovery program. And the Supreme Court has joined the battle against sexual harassment. Ordinarily, we'd talk about these things, but tonight we're taking time out for a small celebration, our 25th birthday, as television's longest-running primetime news program. We've watched a lot of world go by in the 1,300 weeks since that February evening in 1967 when Washington Week first took to the air here on public broadcasting. We've witnessed and reported on a sweeping sea of change, two wars involving the United States, the social rebellion of the 1960s, a president driven from office by scandal, the Reagan Revolution, and of course, the collapse of communism. It's been an extraordinary period, and through it all, Washington Week has stuck firmly to its basic principle of telling it like it is. We made our debut as a local program, but soon went nationwide on the brand new PBS network. The first moderator was broadcaster John Davenport. He was followed by lawyer Max Kampelman, who later became Ronald Reagan's arms control negotiator. Robert McNeil was in charge in the early 70s before teaming up with Jim Lehrer. I came along in 1974 when sideburns were the great rage. Yeah, we sat around a square table, uh, the microphones nailed on the table, and uh, we had, uh, it's horrendous to think back on it, we had three-minute scripts in those days we would read, then the other three minutes of each person's segment. Charles Cordray, the Pentagon reporter for the Baltimore Sun, began appearing on Washington Week from the virtual beginning. Soon, he was joined by two other regulars, Neil McNeil of Time Magazine and Peter Lissagor of the Chicago Daily News. Robin McNeil was an early moderator, and Vietnam was a dominant topic in those days. There's going to be a great deal of mystification and bewilderment among the American people. We're going to be very charitable and generous toward Hanoi, but not toward the draft dodgers in uh, Montreal and in Toronto. And I really believe that the American people are going to be uh, confused by this uh, equation, as they have been com uh, confused, in my judgment, about the Vietnam War from the very Can beginning. Can I make an observation? I'm not sure that's the point you were getting at, Charlie. Well, but no, I think that's even a better point than yeah. I was getting at. I was thinking about what the chancelleries of the world will think of it more than... I think that uh, uh, you want an honest, quick answer. I think they'll think we're bribing Hanoi to keep the peace, to keep the agreement, and to let our prisoners yeah. go. But then came an even greater crisis, Watergate. I'm just wondering what's on those tapes, because as you've heard through the House Judiciary Committee debate, nobody truly believes that the president would at this late date be holding on to exculpatory evidence. And there is a feeling around town, as you also know, that those tapes may be far more damaging than anything we've seen so far, or why else would the president have held them this long and stonewalled, to use that awful word, both the committee and the courts. And so I think we may be in for some shocks. So Rick, the outspoken reporting about Nixon policies didn't go over well with the Nixon White House. And an attempt was made to kill federal funding for PBS news programs. Washington Week's next moderator, Lincoln Ferber, decided to fight back. It was reported in Washington today that there is a possibility that Washington Week in Review may not be funded again after June of this coming year. And if those of you who have been part of our audience over the past six years would care to express an opinion on the possibility of this program's going off the air, here is our address. The response to that announcement was really stunning, uh, especially in public television terms. Um, over the next few weeks, uh, upwards of 15,000 letters poured in to us. And one of the really touching things about it, I think, was that um, 
a lot of those letters included money, uh, dollar bills, checks for $15, $25. Uh, the people just wanted to keep that program on the air. Washington Week survived, but Richard Nixon did not, as the darkness of August 1974 descended over the White House. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. All of the bitterness that Mr. Nixon contained in his resignation speech came out in that long rambling discourse before his, before his cabinet and his staff in the East Room. Uh, his uh, bitterness against the press, his bitterness against his enemies, his bitterness against those who would suggest that the Watergate principles got feathered their own nest. During those years, the star of the program had become the witty, straight-talking Peter Lissagor, who covered all the big stories. Mr. Richardson, are we not back to square one in which an administration is in the position of investigating itself, and is that a credible position? Lissagor graced our presence for nine years, and then one night in December 1976, I had to make the saddest announcement of my broadcasting career. Good evening. Peter Lissagor died today. He died of cancer. He'd been ill off and on since last February. He'd been a regular member of our panel since this program was started almost 10 years ago. We got the word about Peter just three hours before airtime, and we were all affected. Uh, Peter was many things uh, to all of us, a uh, good friend, uh, delightful uh, dinner companion, uh, um, great colleague, but I think there's one thing that all of us could agree on, and that is, and that, is that here in, in the nation's capital, he was a very special kind of journalist. It was that remarkable sense of Peter's wit and his earthiness and no nonsense. He could put you down, he could put us down, too. Mm. For him, every day was a fresh beginning. Every morn was the world born new, and I will miss him. We've just simply lost the best reporter in town. The passing of Peter Lissagor was the passing of an era. Soon, a new president took office, and new faces began appearing on Washington Week to consider new crises. The Iranian crisis is now in its sixth day, Hank. Any sign of a break? No one dreamed the hostage crisis would last over a year and would only end when still another president took over. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Good evening. There are times when words seem almost inadequate to describe events. And this has been one of those weeks, the installation of a new leader at home and the freeing of 52 Americans abroad. The reporters arrive at our studios 45 minutes in advance. They're given a bit of cosmetic patching up and then pass final muster with producer Ricky Green. Six, yeah. You talking about six, seven minutes? Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's I think it's yeah. time. So what, the letters why don't we, last, first. Yeah. The well, then I'm going to turn to Charlie and why put a... Why don't we come out to the studio? I think it's yeah, time. Right. And then I'm going to uh, put a question to Charlie, so... And the new set will be unveiled. <laughs> Then the long walk down the hall to Studio A. Our reporters have represented the finest in American journalism. Four have won Pulitzer Prizes. Speaking for all of us, we feel immensely blessed to have been able to shed a little light on a lot of darkness. The country has survived these 25 years, and so has Washington Week, because we've had the tender, loving care of a lot of good people, our producers, directors, and technicians. And the other night, we had a reunion of the Washington Week family. The State Department was the setting for this memorable evening. I concluded the evening with a few words about this program and the meaning of this milestone. I'd just like to say a word about uh, the people who are not here tonight, but have made it possible for all of us to be here tonight, namely our fans. I don't think there are any more loyal and devoted followers of a television program than those adherents of Washington Week. We've established a, a bond with viewers that I think is humbling and truly rare in all the vast realm of television. 
So many thanks for 25 years of togetherness. Next week, back to normalcy as we begin our next quarter century. I'm Paul Duke. Good night for all of us here on Washington Week.